And just a few house rules before we start. Just ask everyone to stay muted during the whole time. There will be some music going on and it just helps if everyone's mics are off. And there will be a call and response time for the liturgy, but um, there are people assigned to speak on behalf of everybody. And so if you just stay muted during the whole time, that would be super appreciated. And so as we get started, I would just like to invite Tara to lead us in a prayer of grounding. And really what this is, we're gonna do this every time we meet, is just a way to step back and breathe and enter into a space of worship. So Tara, why don't you lead us in this? God of the body, renew and refresh our senses. Help us treat our breath as blessing. Help us treat our movement as miraculous. Help us treat our heartbeat as holy. God of the land, you put everything into motion. Help us treat everything as spiritual. Help us to resist destruction and overproduction. Help us take care of all that you have made. God of the neighborhood, you have made us in your image. Help us to feel our worth. Help us to see the dignity in others, even our enemies. Help us to acknowledge those that have walked this soil long before us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Scripture we'll be focusing on today will be from Luke. And Anton, can you lead us in reading that? Luke 1, 46 through 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. God has looked with favor on my lowliness, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. God has helped Israel in mercy according to the promises of our ancestors. As we approach and become aware of the presence of God, Tara, can you lead us in another prayer? God of mercy, God of justice, we have nothing to fear when we come to you. Like Mary, we can come to you with frustration, with boldness, with defiance. We can come to you not satisfied with the present reality, and we can trust that you will make things new. Tonight, make us hopeful of a better future. Let us embrace our grief and frustration. Let us be humble and honest about our compliance with injustice. Let us be resolved to partner with you in the renewal of all things. You are welcome to be with us. Carry us on your wings of love. Amen. <clears throat> of our faith you are welcome in this place you are welcome in this place and holy holy god of our faith you are welcome in this place you are welcome in this place come fill our hearts oh come fill our hearts up. With your presence, come fill our hearts up. Ooh, come fill our hearts up. With your presence, sweet Lord, sustain us. Yes, sweet Lord, sustain us. Sing, sweet Lord, sweet Lord, sustain us. Fill us up, sweet Lord. 
carry me, sweet Lord. You carry me on the wings of love. You carry me, sweet Lord. You carry me on the wings of love. You carry me, sweet Lord. You carry me on the wings of love. You carry me, sweet Lord. You carry me, come fill out. With your presence, come fill our hearts up and make us aware. Come fill our hearts up with your presence. We love to stay. Thank you, Bobby. Man, I, I miss worshiping with y'all, man, honestly. But thanks for leading us in worship, Bobby. And um, we're going to enter into a time of liturgy. And again, like I said earlier, this is something that as a community is new for us as we practice together. But we just felt that as we're able to meet only online during this time, it would be a helpful way for us to continue to affirm all of the values that we share. Um, and it's a way for us to express those things together. And with a lot of things going on, we felt like it would be wise of us to write a liturgy on justice um, and to lead us in that and to act as the voices of the people is gonna be Tara and Anton. So let's enter into the liturgy of justice together. In the face of violence. Peace. In the face of oppression. Justice. In the face of enslavement. Freedom. In the face of violence. Peace. War. No more. Brutality. No more. Conquering. No more. God's peace transcends all understanding. Let us lay our weapons down. Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called children of God. In the face of violence. Peace. In the face of oppression. Justice. In the face of enslavement. Freedom. In the face of oppression. Justice. Inequality. No more. Dehumanization. No more. Discrimination. No more. God's image is present in everyone. Let us all see it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. In the face of violence. Peace. In the face of oppression. Justice. In the face of enslavement. Freedom. In the face of enslavement. Freedom. Human trafficking. No more. Slave labor. No more. Exploitation. No more. If there is an inheritance from God. Then it is an inheritance for all. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the face of violence. Peace. In the face of oppression. Justice. In the face of enslavement. Freedom. Amen. Restoring us a new mind when hatred. 
hatred seems to come. Restoring us a new and pure heart. And let your kingdom come. Restoring us. Restoring us a new When hatred seems to come, restoring us a new and pure heart, and let your kingdom come. Let's sing it one more time. A new mind. Restoring us a new seems to come restoring us a new and pure heart and let your kingdom come let your kingdom come let your kingdom come let your kingdom come Amen. Thanks, Bobby, for leading us in song. And just as we start the meditation, um, just want to thank everyone again for being here. Like, miss everyone so much. And I'm just glad that even in spite of everything, we all get to um, share in our values and feel connected in some way. Um, and just like Anton read earlier, we're just going to be meditating a little bit on Mary's song. I think just in the moment where we are, um, as a culture, I think as followers of Jesus, it's our responsibility to speak prophetically in this moment. And I believe that Mary was living in a similar moment when she received the promise of Jesus, of the Messiah. And so I think that she is a good example to look to. And so just a few thoughts as we read this. I think this prayer a lot of time for me, especially growing up in church, I heard during Christmas and it was always presented as like a soft, peaceful prayer of gratitude from Mary to her God. And I think growing up in especially the American church, it's really easy to soften Mary's message, um, to kind of reduce this prayer to an individual expression of praise and thankfulness when I think it's a lot more than that. And we have spiritualized its meaning to simply be about our attitude and our gratitude and our heart when Mary actually presents very real social implications in regards to God. And Mary's faith was one that saw everything as spiritual. And part of her worship was asking God to break into the social fabric of her world and make things new. The practice of imagination and hope and anticipation of a better world, they're deeply spiritual things and they were part of Mary's worship. And to speak more on this, Carolyn Sharp says that Luke doesn't envision Mary as a gentle, radiant woman quietly praying to God. Instead, we see her as an oppressed and uncertain girl who sings defiantly to her God through tears and clenched fists against an unknown future. Mary's courageous song of praise is a radical resource for those seeking honor and dignity amid the suffering and conflicts of real life. And I think we start to understand the very real implications of Mary's prayer, even when we look at how this prayer has been treated throughout history. And even throughout history, this song, this prayer has been banned by certain governments because of the very real implications. Um, when British churches were coming to India under their colonization, it was banned from being sung and being prayed. Its message was thought to be too subversive. And likewise, in Guatemala in the 1980s, when there was rampant wealth inequality, um, Mary's vision of God having a preferential love for the poor, it was seen as too dangerous and it was starting to inspire the poor to believe that change was possible. And likewise, around the same time in Argentina during the Dirty War, when lots of children started to get missing, the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo started posting this prayer in the capital's plaza and the government responded by banning 
its public display. And so this prayer, Mary's song, is not just an individual gentle expression of gratitude. It has very real implications. And even Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was executed by Nazi Germany, said this in one of his last sermons, that Mary's song has none of the sweet nostalgic tones of our Christian Christmas carols. It is instead a hard and relentless declaration about the power of God over the powerlessness of humanity. All that to say, I read Mary's song now, and hopefully this is not just a theme through this prayer, but through the rest of scripture. I want to read it with fresh eyes, eyes that are willing to be open to a new way of seeing God. God's not only concerned about our individual faith and our personal expressions of worship, but he's one that has marked everything as sacred. God's not just concerned about the individuals that perpetuate injustice, but about the systems and societies that do as well. He's just as concerned about the interconnected families and communities and tribes who are hurting just as much as he is about the individuals who are hurting. And I hope that as we dive into this song, we can hear Mary's song with fresh ears and new eyes. And I just want to walk through a few phrases from Mary's prayer and hope that it will help us reimagine her prayer and put her in the center of this story. And so just one of the phrases to walk through is Mary sings that God has brought the powerful down from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. And I think what I find is a theme in this phrase and in the whole song is what a lot of people call the wonderful reversal of God. And it's that Mary's anticipation of Jesus is that he flips the world systems upside down. In other words, the kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom. It disrupts the status quo, it challenges it, it inverts the structures and the values that we think are normal. And even putting this into context, weeks after singing this prayer, Mary would be forced by the Roman Empire, along with her husband and with the baby in her womb, to go to Bethlehem for a census. And well, a few of us, even who are on this call, were in this part of the world a few years ago. And what we realize is even geographically, Bethlehem sits at the foot of a place that used to be called Herodium. It sits at the foot of one of Herod's largest palaces. And so I just imagine Mary, pregnant, being relegated to the place in the home where animals are kept, looking up to Herodium, to Herod's palace, the vast power and vast riches and singing these exact words, singing God has brought the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. So just imagining the context where Mary's at is she's speaking of an upside down kingdom. Mary also sings God has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. Again, we see the wonderful reversal of God's kingdom, right? God flipping the world upside down. The rich are sent away with nothing. The hungry are filled and are satisfied, right? It seems impossible in Mary's world. And it's hard to understand the meaning of this if we don't understand the economic landscape of the world that Mary was living in. It, the Roman Empire thrived off of economic extraction. It meant stealing riches from the poor and extracting it into the powerful and placing it into the hands of Rome, away from where all the work and all the labor is being done, letting the wealthy go off free and extending taxes threefold to those on the outskirts. And it's the reason why in, even in Jesus's community, tax collectors are viewed as some of the most evil and most despicable people because they were such a present picture of injustice. And it's the reason why Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, who profited off of poor people, it's the reason why after he encountered Jesus, he lived the exact thing that Mary's singing. He gave away his riches to those whom he had wronged. And it's the reason why Matthew, who was a tax collector, it was so sacrificial for him to follow Jesus because he's leaving behind that system of extraction, which he had profited off of so much. And so for us today, I think understanding the world of the first century will help us live as followers of Jesus in a world that has close to a similar system and also to live like Jesus, right? Who graciously invited and challenged and forgave people who were in this system, where he wasn't in the business of canceling the system, but he invited them into a new way of life. And the last phrase that Mary says is, God has helped Israel in mercy, according to the promises of our ancestors. And what I see in Mary here is a connectedness to her history. 
It's a refusal to see her story as just an individual one. She refuses to live life in a vacuum where it's just her experiences and what she has known, but she chooses to look at her history. And I think in Western culture, it's hard to view life this way. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from people who've grown up in a familial culture, right? A collective culture. One, because simply it's a deeply spiritual practice to be open to new things. I think we should always be learning from people who have different experiences than us. But also, I think it's important because Jesus lived in a culture that was deeply familial and deeply collective. And I think even more importantly for our family, um, a good reason it is important for us to learn from people who grew up in a familial culture is because there are people in our spiritual family, our community, people on this Zoom call right now who've grown up in this kind of culture and in this kind of way. And just as we have learned to see and feel how God moves individually, I think we're also inviting everyone to see how God moves among people and tribes and families collectively. There is beauty in the systemic and the interconnected application of God's grace and God's truth and God's values. And as we look at Mary, it's actually the foundation for her faith and for the assurance that the promises of God are gonna be kept. And so as we move forward from this meditation, just a few questions to ask ourselves in reflection is, do we see Jesus the same, the same way Mary did? Is our faith concerned with social realities the same way Mary's was, or do we try to separate the two? And what sorts of things do I expect Jesus to accomplish? Are they just individual or just collective, or is there a tension and a balance? And just to close, I want to close with a quote from Sister Elizabeth Johnson. She says that Mary's prayer is a revolutionary song of salvation whose political, economic, and social dimensions should not be ignored. People in need in every society hear a blessing in this prayer. The battered woman, the single mother without resources, those without food on the table, those without a table, the young left to their own devices, the old who are ignored. Those neglected on the basis of their skin color, all of the oppressed are encompassed in the hope that Mary proclaims. I'd like to invite Bobby to lead us into more song. Let justice flow like a river. Let mercy fall like the rain Let justice flow like a river Let mercy fall like the rain justice. Let justice flow like a river Let mercy fall like the rain on me let justice flow like a river. Let mercy fall. Justice and safety, goodness and mercy, all around, all around. Favor and guidance, freedom and kindness all around all around power and patience and sweet liberation all around all around the hurt and the broken the love and the open all around all around the sick and the Houseless, the wealthy, all around, all around, the poor single mother, the woman of color, all around. So let justice flow like a river, let mercy fall like the rain on me. Let 
justice flow like a river Let mercy fall like the rain Oh, let justice flow like a river yeah. Let mercy fall like the rain on me Let justice flow like a river Let mercy fall Thanks, Bobby. Um, and again, that's a song that we created as a community and it's based off of the prophet Amos. Um, we have more music coming out, but I think it speaks to the heart of what we're feeling right now. So just gonna enter into another liturgy. And just like the first one was a liturgy of justice, we want to enter into a liturgy of discipleship because really we believe that the best way that all of our values get entrenched and hashed out is in the context of discipleship and relationship and trusting one another. And so I'm gonna ask Anton and Tara to lead us in a liturgy of discipleship. God of covenant love, you sustain us with food and drink. You nourish us with friends. As real as food. You satisfy us with family as refreshing as water. You cover us with love. As we walk together, we bear each other's burdens. As we live together, we submit to one another. We rejoice with those who rejoice. We weep with those who weep. The cross. We take it together. The bread. We break it together. The pain. We bear it together. The joy. We share it together. The mission. We live it together. The love. We give it together. The light. Let us cherish. The darkness. Let it perish. Amen. You've given me a new name, you set me in a family, you pull me out of my pain, you're never walking out on me, you're singing over me, you're singing over me, you're singing over me, the song of love, you're singing, you're singing over me. You're singing over me, you're singing over me, the song of love you've given me. You've given me a new name, you told me that you love me. You set me in a safe place, well, you are my security. You're singing over me, you're singing over me. You're singing over me, song of love. You're singing, you're singing over me. You're singing over me. You're singing over me, song of love. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my perfect father's love. This is my story, this is my song, this is my perfect father's love. This is my story, this is my song, this is my perfect father's love. This is my story, this is my song, this is my perfect father's love. It's your singing over me. You're singing over me, you're singing over me, the song of love, you're singing, you're singing over me, you're 
singing over me. You're singing over me. A song of love. Thank you for my new day. Thank you for my family. I can never repay a love that gave it all for me. You're singing over me. You're singing over me. You're singing over me. A song of love. You're singing over me. You're singing over me. You're singing over me. A song of love. Thank you, Bobby. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. God has looked with favor on my lowliness, and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. God has helped Israel in mercy according to the promises of our ancestors. God of mercy, God of justice. We have nothing to fear when we live and move and breathe. Like Jesus, we can move forward with freedom, with peace, with justice. Let us trust and believe your promises. Let us embrace your vision to make things new. Let us live in the reality of your upside down kingdom, where the poor are fed and the lowly are seen. Let us hear your song of love and let us do it together. We go further together, amen. Amen. Thanks for closing us, Tara. And thanks for coming, everyone. Just love this time, even though it's kind of weird and kind of crazy. Just glad we all get to worship together. And I think uh, just before we go, we just have a few um, just like announcements as a community and just some vision for what it looks like uh, over the next few months with this moment that we're in. So I don't know if you want to go over these, Anton. Yeah, sure. And I'll ask a couple of people to share that are leading some of these things. Um, we are going to do a Zoom gathering once a month at least. Um, the leadership team is going to actually talk about if we want to do more. Um, but this is kind of the start of a new pattern. And I'm super encouraged from it. So we'll let you guys know how often we're going to meet um, going forward uh, using Zoom. Um, Dana is going to do some um, new stuff with our podcast going forward. Dana, is there anything that you would want to share about that? Not really. It's going to be just a weekly rhythm and hopefully just getting a lot of voices from inside our community and outside. So it's going to be fun. Beautiful. Uh, Bobby is going to be leading worship and prayer on Friday mornings. Uh, Bobby, anything you want to share about what we're going to be doing there? Yeah, it's just a time where you can uh, just tune in for 30 minutes. I'll be, it'll be a very reflective, meditative type of worship. I'll just kind of be flowing in and out of like different things that I feel like God's leading me into. But it's a time where you can just talk to God and you can sing along. You can journal. People have already had testimonies of them just like really going in with journaling. So, yeah, just come and join. Just pop on Zoom Fridays at 8 a.m. Sweet. Um, huddles. So huddles is something that we really value here, which is basically our organized uh, vehicle for some discipleship that we do. If you're not in one and you want to be, or you have questions about it, go ahead and reach out to us. Um, music. Um, we have 
our second EP coming out soon. We're really excited, probably in the next couple of weeks. Andres, is there anything you'd want to say about that EP? Uh, no, I'm good. I just uh, check in on Instagram and all the socials for updates on that. Sweet, brother. Um, and also just a couple, uh, or not couple, but one resource that we really love is Lectio 365 as a daily resource just to hear from God and be in prayer. Um, it's an app that we really love. So we just encourage everybody to kind of follow along with that. And also lastly, uh, our internship TCPU is starting soon. We're really excited about it. And uh, if you have any questions even about that, go ahead and reach out. We're going to be starting that at the beginning of September. I'll say one more thing about Lectio too. I think it's just been a really like helpful and accessible way for us to be on the same page too, in terms of like what we're reading and what we're hearing together. And it's also the way it's formatted is like um, a huge way we were inspired for this gathering. And so I would even just say, yeah, it's a super helpful flow and really accessible too, if you're busy. Great. Awesome. Um, follow us on Instagram for any updates at the Commonplace PDX. And also, if you have any needs, financial or any or otherwise, uh, just reach out and let us know. We'd love to help. We will post this on YouTube. So if there's anybody that you know that would you would want to send this to, it'll be live by tomorrow on our YouTube channel. That's it, y'all. Much love. Love you. Miss you all. Wait, I need... A hug. Please. Ha, 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 ha. You got it?